Hey everybody, this is Patrick JMT and I'm partnering with Chegg and here we're going to talk about derivatives of trigonometric functions. So we'll start off giving a, a graphical description or maybe a, a indication of what the derivative of sine could be and then we'll just talk about the derivative of cosine. Once we know the derivative of sine and cosine, we can use those to find the derivatives of the other trig functions and then we'll just also talk about some just random examples. Okay, so let's talk about the derivative of sine x. So first off, I've just got the graph of, of sine x here, regular old sine x. If we want to think about the graph of the derivative, notice at, at uh, negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The tangent lines on sine x, or, or the slopes of those tangent lines will all be zero. So that means on the derivative graph, at those corresponding x-coordinates, the y-coordinate should be 0 because it says, hey, at the original x-coordinate of negative 3 pi over 2, the slope of the tangent line is 0. So likewise, at negative pi over 2, at positive pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, and you can keep going. So let's look at the little section between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So over that interval, notice my function is increasing. And the tangent lines, if you think about any tangent line through there, it's going to have a positive slope. Well, it looks like the tangent line would be steepest. Let's try that a little better. It looks like, to me, the tangent line would be steepest right at the x-coordinate of 0. So that's where we're going to get the largest y value on the derivative graph. Because, again, the derivative graph tells you the slope of that tangent line. So, okay, let's graph the derivative. So it says the tangent lines, they're, they're uh, all positive, and they're getting steeper, 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 until right when we hit the x-coordinate of 0, that's where it's the steepest. And then, okay, they're still uh, positive, but they're getting less steep. They're, they're, they're sort of leveling out, and it says the slopes are going back to 0. And that's when we're back at the top of uh, our, our, our sine x graph at pi over 2. And we can continue this process. You can go through the exact same argument if you look at the section of graph between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. There, the tangent lines are all going to be negative. They'd be uh, pointing downwards. And to me, it looks like the tangent line that's most steep would be at the x-coordinate of pi. So it says the tangent lines get steeper, steeper, more negative, more negative. And then they at, at pi, that's where it's the, the steepest. And then the tangent lines start leveling it back out until they're at a, a tangent or a slope of zero. And you could continue this process. We could continue this on the left side. You could continue on the right side, etc. So this certainly isn't a formal proof, but this looks this looks like a, a whole lot like uh, the function cosine x. And that's exactly what happens. It turns out if you take the derivative with respect to x of sine x, you get cosine x. And you can find the proof of this in any textbook. You can easily find it online. I know a lot of textbooks will use a, a, a geometric argument that's kind of, I mean, it's, it's very clever, uh, in fact, I think. So, and for free, you can do the same sort of uh, visual suggestion, suggestion, I don't want to say argument, but it turns out the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. So be careful you don't forget that negative. So these are just two very fundamental uh, derivative formulas. You'll need to know these for as long as you're taking calculus. So let's find the derivative of tangent of x. So I'm going to use that little prime notation to denote the derivative. Well, I can write tangent as sine over cosine. So this is the thing. All of the other trig functions, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, if you forget them, as long as you remember the derivatives of sine and cosine and some very basic identities, you can get the derivatives of, of the other ones. Okay, so here we've got the, we've got to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of sine over cosine, it says we'll get, let's see, so cosine of x, we get the denominator. We multiply that by the derivative of the numerator, but we know the derivative of sine is cosine. That's what we just discussed. There's a minus sign in between. So then it says we uh, take the numerator, which was sine x, and we multiply that by the derivative of the denominator. But we said the derivative of the denominator, which is cosine of x, is negative sine x. And then it says we take that all over the denominator squared. 
Okay, so what is this stuff? Well, this is cosine squared x. Notice we have two negatives, so we'll get a positive sine squared x all over cosine squared x. But remember an identity, we can use an identity. And remember that cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals one. So I always tell people if there's one identity you remember in trigonometry, remember that one. So we'll get one over cosine squared, but I can write one over cosine squared as one over cosine times one over cosine. Well, one over cosine is secant, so we've got secant times secant, and we get secant squared of x. That's gonna be the derivative for tangent. So I've got all the uh, formulas here jotted down. You can see where I've got the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and I've got the others as well. I've got the derivative of secant, cosecant, cotangent. You can see all these. Um, and I kind of remember too, like, you know, so the derivative of tangent is to secant squared as cotangent is to cosecant squared, except be careful because we got to be careful about signs. Notice if you take the derivative of any of the cofunctions, so the derivative of cosine, the derivative of cosecant, the derivative of cotangent, notice all of those, when you take the derivative, there's a, a, a minus sign that you end up getting. If you take the derivative of sine, tangent, and secant, notice you get uh, no negative sign. So that's something to just notice and remember. The derivative of the cofunctions, you pick up a negative sign. So this is what I'm saying here, very common mistake. People will just make those sign errors. For those of you eventually that see, so these are derivatives, down the road, if you see antiderivatives, be especially careful about these signs because people get them mixed up. So just like it says here, you can still use the product quotient and chain rule. Nothing else has changed. It's just now we have more formulas to play with. So let's take the derivative of f of x equals x squared sine x plus 5 cosecant x. Okay, so the derivative of this, notice on this first part, I would have to use the product rule. So I'll use the product rule on that, that first term. So I'll leave the x squared alone. We said the derivative of sine is cosine plus for the product rule. Now I'll take the derivative of x squared. That's just 2x. The derivative of sine, or excuse me, now we're leaving the sine alone. We've already taken the derivative of sine. Okay, so that would be the derivative of the first term. And then we said the derivative of cosecant x, that was negative cosecant x cotangent x. So the five comes along for the ride, but notice I'm gonna get a negative five, cosecant x cotangent x, because again, we said the derivative of cosecant is negative, so it's gonna change that sign. So I'm just doing that. And if you wanted to, I mean, you should always think, hey, is there any simplification? I don't see much simplification, so you could simply just remove those brackets and, and call it a day. Okay, the next one, it's just like when we took the derivative of, 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 of tangent. You would, this one, slightly more complicated, but you would just use the quotient rule again. So for the quotient rule, it says we get what's on the denominator multiplied by the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine minus whatever's in the numerator, which is cosine x multiplied by what's in the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of one is just zero, minus, and we said the derivative of uh, sine x is gonna be cosine x. So again, the negative is just coming from this negative. And then we would have the denominator squared. So we would have one minus sine x quantity squared. So maybe this cleans up a little bit. Let's see, so we could distribute this negative sine x term. So we would get negative sine x times one, which is negative sine x. We would get a negative sine x and a negative sine x. Well, that's positive um, sine squared of x. Then we would have two negatives here, which would give us a positive cosine squared x. This is all over one minus sine x squared. But again, we said sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So I could write the numerator as negative sine x plus 1. I'm going to write that as 1 minus sine x. And lo and behold, look at that. It's exactly what we have in the denominator. 
uh, we have those factors, 1 minus sine x times 1 minus sine x. So I could cancel out one of those factors in the denominator with the 1 in the numerator. And it says my derivative would be 1 over 1 minus sine x. So okay, um, keep an eye out for identities when you use, uh, when you're taking derivatives involving trig functions, because a lot of times you're going to be able to simplify these things down. So be very, very careful about that. You know, it can be just tricky when you use the quotient rule just to, you know, simplify this stuff. But again, if it looks like maybe if you, you know, for example, if you're looking at an, if you have solutions to some of these and you're like, man, mine doesn't look like that. Try identities. Try identities. So, okay, that's the moral of the story. You got new derivative formulas to use. Again, just still just use the product quotient. Uh, and uh, eventually, if you haven't seen it yet, you'll use the chain rule. Just all those rules still apply. You just have new basic formulas to work with.